Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. This is the last episode of my tutorial series, episode 9. Last episode we went over how to get a bit of a high risk, a high reward activity in EVE Online. Now we're going to go to a more low risk, moderate reward activity. And I'll also go into how to join corporations and things to think about in the future of your journey in New Eden. As I've said many times before, if you are a complete beginner to EVE Online and have no idea how to play, but you are interested in playing EVE Online, go to part one of this tutorial series. I explain everything from the ground up in a clear cut manner and no prior knowledge is required. So let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing I would want to do is I've been continuously, or I've been showing you now how to earn ISK. So I've been showing you how to earn ISK through exploration. That's a good high risk, high reward activity. But say you want to do a bit more relaxing activity or just something that doesn't require so much time investment as going around because it takes quite a long time to go around and go into wormholes. Then I would recommend you do something called Abyssal Dead Space. The reason I told you in the very first episode of this series to train it to Kaldari destroy and light missiles is because I have a very good fit which I think or a fit which I think is very good for abyssal dead space. This is then a type of PvE activity where you shoot NPCs and will get some money. So this fit right here is very good for it in my opinion. And if you want to get this fit, you go in the description and you'll see something like this, like Korax PvE in the description. What you do is you just copy paste, copy this whole thing. Copy this, then in the fitting simulator, just click import and you'll see it here, simulate it, and then you can save it. And then what, you, what you'll what you do is then when you've saved it like this, you just click right click and click buy all. There we go. And now you right click and click multi-fit and we will have like put the modules on the ship. So what is Abyssal Dead Space? Well, Abyssal Dead Space is a kind of activity that involves taking a filament. A filament is like a key or portal. So if we go here in the encounters and we can see Abyssal Dead Space here, you start here and then you go and take a portal to these different rooms like this triangle here. And there's three rooms. In each room, you fight enemies. And when you've killed the enemies, then you can unlock this this loot box and you open it and you get some loot which you can sell on the market for some dank dank isk. Uh, we're going to then use the Korax and we're going to do the lowest level of Abyssal Dead Space. So there's different levels of Abyssal Dead Space you can do. So if I type exotic filament, then you can see there's different levels here. There's agitated, calm, all these different ones. The lowest level is tranquil. Then that's like T0 as we say, tier 0. Then comes calm which is T1. Then you get T2, which is added to, you can see these lines here, they mark which tier it is. And basically you can think of this is when you take these key, the higher tiers, you can also see here in attributes tier two, the higher the tier, the more difficult it'll be, the more difficult the enemies will be, but the more rewards you get. So I, me personally, I do T5, the chaotic ones, but now in your Korax, you're going to be doing the tranquil ones because this is a very safe and reliable activity to do here in Jita. You don't have to travel far at all to do this. That's what I also like about this activity right here. So you buy two of them. The way Abyssal Dead Space works is that Abyssal Dead Space is actually made for solo cruisers. So you then normally have one filament and take a cruiser to activate it. But uh, you can also do co-op. So you use if you're using destroyers, you'd use two filaments and frigate co-op, you'll use three filaments. It's made to use three frigates or made to use two destroyers. Now we're doing this by ourselves, so we're still going to have to use two filaments, but it's just that we're going to be going in as one frigate. So you have to have two filaments then that's why i bought two filaments you can see here you can see it this is two filaments also when we're going to do this you're going to have to uh, be in a fleet that's just the way it works it's a bit strange that you have to be in a fleet when you are doing this by yourself a fleet is basically like a party so to say so what you have to do is scroll down and look for your name you can see my name is over here show info you can also just right click on your ship i think uh, and then what you do is you right click on this uh, notification at the top left, form fleet with. Now we're in a fleet and you just close this menu here. Close all these. So now we're in uh, a fleet and people can join our fleet and they could actually, we could actually run this together. You could actually have a friend it would do the exact same thing. You have to be two destroyers and then you can, uh, you can run them together. So if you have a friend, you can also do this, maybe do it a bit faster. But you have to also remember you're going to have to share the rewards with him if you're nice. <laughs> okay, so we undock here. 
we're going to go on our undock we've made our undock bookmarks in uh, previous videos so this is very useful to just quickly get out of there and also abyssal dead space only works when you're far away from things so you can't do it very close to you can't do it very close to a station you have to be like in the middle of nowhere so i've actually got all my modules here if you, you can't see your modules move up some of the windows you'll it'll be maybe some of them maybe are hidden behind something and actually i'm going to minimize this d-scan because i don't need this so we're now here in this undock place, but there's all these mobile depots all over the place, so it still won't work to use the abyssal dead space key here. You, if I go, you have to right click, use filament, and then go in two destroyers, and you'll see here that I have to be a thousand kilometers away from a mobile depot or some other kind of deployable structure. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a safe, and we've seen doing making safes before in the exploration video. And we will just add a location, click save, and then when we are in warp, then we'll click submit to get like a location that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. And that's where we can run our abyssal dead space. And I call this the abyssal launch site, where you kind of launch into the abyssal depths of the abyss. <laughs> Abyssal dead space is uh, a, a separate dimension from our own, so you don't, you can't get there any other way apart from using these filaments. Right click on the safe and go there. Okay, now we're in the safe spot, so now it's alright. Also, just when you get to the safe spot, just double click in space so you start moving because sometimes it glitches out that you can't activate it if, you're, if you don't move at all when you uh, warp to a location. So now you can just click use it and activate for two destroys. Important that you have two destroys and make sure you're in a fleet. You have to be in a fleet if you want to use destroys. If you're doing it in a cruiser, uh, then you won't have to be in a fleet. But okay, so we now activate this like a gate and click activate. And if it doesn't activate you maybe are too far away from it you have to be close to it so we're just going to go in this and we're going to face back guys it's going to be three different rooms there's going to be a gate in between each of them so it's quite simple very very simple it's like almost like a mission you could say like we did before in the career agents but you can get some nice isk and if you're lucky you can even get very good loot drops as well but it offers a more consistent and more relaxing in my opinion way to get isk than the exploration you don't have to worry at all about people killing you uh, so and this only takes maybe like 10 minutes and you don't have to think about uh, you know uh, having to go through a bunch of wormholes back so this is how it is we're in the abyss now and this is one thing to understand we're in uh, there's the gate over there you see the transfer conduit this red thing right here is the biocompetitive cache the loot cache you do not you only want to go to the loot cache and don't stray far away from like this whole area because then if you could there's this invisible border you can't see it but if you go too far out you will die you will get killed by the unstable abyssal depths it has something to do with that there's like a whole gravitational field if you go too far away so you can see that there's this thing called a multi-body tracking pylon that's just something that gives buffs to your tracking of your ship so it'll make so that your turrets turn a bit faster it doesn't affect us because we're using missiles they they don't they can't turn so we lock up the different things and we approach the biocommunitive cache that's all we have to do approach the biocommunitive cache and start shooting on this Ephialtis lancer right here this is a very simple activity you don't have to think much about it and you can see here we're making a quite quick work of him and you can see here also we've got 28 kilometers so you couldn't start shooting him straight away also make sure you activate your modules right here that you can our multi-spectrum and the afterburner the these modules you know give us more shield and also just make us go a bit faster make us approach this a bit faster there are different types of abyssal dead space uh, filaments so we i told you that there's different difficulty tiers but there's also different like weather effects so for example we're doing exotics right now but there's also a tranquil electric you can see here there's tranquil electric and there they've got different uh, buffs and debuffs the point is all of these different sites the almost all of them have affect different resistances so and the reason why we are running exotics is because they make kinetic resistance lower as you can see here we've got a bit of a lower kinetic resistance than we would actually have and it also makes the enemy's kinetic resistance a bit lower so that's very favorable for us because our core axe only has bonuses to kinetic light missile and rocket damage that means that we're essentially going to be doing more damage because the enemies are going to have lower kinetic resistance so we'll be applying more damage now you shoot this loot cache here to open it and you can grab the loot here so we've got a little bit of isk here 600k not so much but we can go to the next site right here they're in the electrical site 
there's reduced EM damage, so you would want to use a ship that does EM damage or is, uh, has an ability to do a lot of EM damage. I could use EM missiles, but the EM missiles will do a bit less damage because the Corax has a bonus specifically to its light missiles. Its light missiles, its kinetic light missiles are buffed, not the EM ones. So I'll be doing less damage. And also, uh, uh, I'll be doing less damage if I were to use EM missiles. You can even see here, if I go in charges, and if I type mule near light missile, you see 67 DPS. While we're using the scourge ones, which are uh, which are kinetic missiles, we have 78 DPS. Also, there's a time limit on how fast you can complete the abyss. So when you start, there's a 20 minute time limit, and this then uh, makes it so that after that 20 minute time limit, your ship and pod will explode. Uh, if you go at the top left, you can see the timer here. I've got 17 minutes left right now, so it's gone three minutes. This is very important to understand because you can't just log off here. If you log off and it's gone then 20 minutes, or you forget about it, then you are basically guaranteed going to die. And uh, you don't want that to happen. You don't want to lose your ship and also your pod. So just keep that in mind. Don't be too slow in the abyss. You shouldn't have any problems when it comes to time doing it in this Korax destroyer, but just don't go AFK here. That will cost you your ship. Okay, there we go. Now we've got two ships over here. These are rogue drones. They're kind of rogue AI type of, uh, of race. This right here, this is a blue cloud. It makes it so that your signature radius is very big. Basically that your ship is like bloated and become really big, but we don't have to worry about it right now. The only thing is if there was, now they're in these tranquil filaments, so we're doing a tier zero. And here you don't find battleships in the higher tiers, you do find battleships. And if you are in one of these clouds here, they'll make your ship like bloom up really big and it'll make it so that they can hit you very easily. It's very hard to dodge their shots then. Basically it makes you harder to dodge shots if you're in here. But it also makes you apply better damage as well if you are against small ships as well. So you can see here, it's very, very simple. All I do is just approach this loot cache, shoot these uh, enemies, and then I get the loot here. And when I come back to Jita, then I can just sell the loot and get some nice isk. And you can sometimes get a lot of stuff from here. It's really a bit of an RNG kind of thing, but it's still a very consistent. You're always knowing that you're going to get something unlike exploration, which maybe you can go for a very long time and not even find a single data in Relic site. So this is like kind of two styles of playing. If you've got a lot of time to spare or you have you feel like the risky kind of guy, then you can always go for exploration. I think you'll earn a bit more there. But if you can't spend so much time in the game or you just want to get a, a you just want to sp you know that that was 10 minutes i'm going to get something then your abyssal dead space is very convenient very uh, simple and doesn't have to you don't have to be so present to be able to do it at least in this tier zero you could do t1s but i would not say recommend it because especially as an alpha clone with low skills and this fitting you're probably going to get killed very easily I do a lot of T5s, that's a completely different level, but when you're at this level, it's going to be very hard. So we approach these by our cumulative cache. This right here is a white cloud, it's called a tachyon cloud. This makes it so that you go very fast. So if you don't have to worry too much about it, it'll just make you go a little bit faster. But if you're using an MWD, you have to be really careful when it comes to these guys, because you will go crazy speeds. This makes you go f like three times faster. So we'll go maybe 1.5k a second with this. So we'll almost go MWD speeds with this. But if I'm already using an MWD, then I'm gonna go so f I'm gonna go so fast that I'll be thrown out into the abyssal depths. Uh, or it's very easy that I get thrown out into the abyssal depths and I can very well die. You die very quickly if you go into the abyssal depths. This is a very important thing. I've seen so many newbies uh, make this mistake when they go into the abyss that they stray out too far and then they die. So really be careful about that. You do not want to go too far out. So we can go to the origin conduit and keep a fire range of 500. So this is now the third site and we've done this. And we got a little bit of isk right here. I mean, it's not crazy amounts, but it's still something, still something consistent. You can see here uh, how 1.9 million. So that's all right. And if we just do a few of these, we've already earned back our ship. So that's that, in my opinion, that's very good. And it's also very easy, very simple. You just approach the loot cache, blast your missiles away. You shouldn't have any issue tanking the NPCs. It's very, very simple. You can see here, this guy is dying very quickly. Also, you'll sometimes see something. Now we didn't encounter one, but there's something called a deviant air range automata suppressor. Now this is a short multi-body tracking pylon, but if you see deviant automata suppressor, like short range deviant automata suppressor, then if you find that you're not doing 
enough damage it's because that shoots down missiles so you'll have to then keep your range from that but just be very careful that you don't go into the abyssal depths that's more important you should eventually kill everything even if there is a deviant automatic suppressor it'll just go a lot slower so now we've finished this we go back to our insta dock and then it should be very simple very very simple we go there and sell our items not much more to it than that very consistent way to make isk you could obviously do this in a different ship you you could maybe do it in a cormorant but in my opinion the corax is very good because it's got pretty good range on the light missiles does okay damage got good shields and also it's just very easy to use if something is going very fast and you're using a cormorant it could be that your turrets miss these missiles will always hit so you don't really have to think about your guns missing that's why i prefer this uh, another, another way I wanted to show you to earn ISK is called Project Discovery. But before we do that, I'm going to just highlight all of these and put them in my inventory. So we're going to then highlight all these items here, and then we're going to sell them. Sell ISK, so we'll sell the items. There we go. We've got 1.7 million right there. So it's like obviously not a crazy amount, but it's something. It's something. And if you do a few of these, you'll end up having quite a bit of risk. And also, you can be lucky. There's a little bit of an RNG loot factor there. To the same way you're doing data sites, you can sometimes get a lot of risk, sometimes get a little bit of risk. Sometimes you can get much more than this, even. You can get many millions. So the second way I wanted to show you how to get ISK is doing project discovery. And the reason why I'm showing you different ways to earn ISK, like I am doing now, is because in EVE Online, it, I mean, the whole game it doesn't have to be about making ISK, but the thing is, if you do know how to make ISK, then it gives you a bit more freedom to do the things you want to do. For example, you can do PvP activities a lot easier if you have the um, if you have a lot more ISK, you can then spend the ISK on PvP ships, and you can go out and fight other people. So this project discovery is about uh, has to do about uh, actually analyzing real data that involves uh, that is related to the coronavirus so you can actually click this product discovery in the left menu here and what you do is if you if i just exit these you see you the this very simple all you have to do is look for clusters of dots so you can see here it's quite clear that there's two clusters here it should be quite obvious and what you have to do is just encapsulate every single one so you can see here uh, I'm, and it doesn't matter if it's not so precise the important thing is that you encapsulate every single thing so you can see there's a couple of uh, these are these dots represent cells and you have to just encapsulate all the cells and it has something to do that these are blood tests of uh, and you're distinguishing different types of cells when it comes to uh, fighting the coronavirus so you have to then encapsulate uh, every single cell and, and encapsulate the different clusters we see so we see one cluster here one cluster here click submit and you see that 28k isk uh, and you just keep doing these and you can actually uh, when you level up you get this flow cytometry rewards crate this is something you can sell or rewards crate flow cytometry rewards crate and you can sell this for 250k when you become a certain level when you level up more you will eventually get these superior ones which sell for 1 million each and also the higher your accuracy so when you get up to, I think it's 90%, you can earn up to like almost 100,000 ISK per uh, one of these anal analysis or like about 90 to 100,000 ISK for each one of these things here. So there'll be just a few clicks, 100,000 ISK. So that, in my opinion, is a very good way to earn ISK. And you don't even have to undock. You can just sit here in a station and do these. But it can get very monotonous. So just keep that in mind. And you can also do max uh, I think 200 of these a day so you can't just completely farm like these like crazy you can also see here you get some of these these rewards here the higher level up you go you can see here eventually you'll get something if you level if you go crazy and level up you'll get a blueprint for a marshal and marshal you can build it and then or sell the blueprint you can, you can see here it goes for very high price 6.6 .6 billion but trust me it's not easy to get to level 500 it's really hard you can find in contracts and you can see here people are selling it for about 5.5 billion so you could also put it there in contracts but to be honest uh, i wouldn't recommend grinding for this uh, this is just crazy amount of grind you'll need to be do we can continue here so we can see here i think this looks like one distinguished cell cluster so we can just put one massive square one massive square there we go and you get the isk every five minutes so you can see here i think i see two cell clusters right here encapsulate it here encapsulate this one here 
and we failed so it, i thought this was one but this these were cells up here apparently con uh, contained this cluster so you can see here this now that five minutes went now i've got a hundred thousand so we can continue going and i think i see two here there we go There we go, we can continue doing that. And something actually I would say is a very good thing you could do. Since the abyssal date space running that I showed you before is very easy, all you have to do is approach the biocommentative cache, shoot the enemies with your missiles. You can actually do this while doing your ex your abyssal dead space running. You just do this simultaneously, and you can then earn basically almost like you know earn more for the same amount of time because you do this and the same time you do abyssal dead space running. It's pretty easy because this is not such a hard activity to do. And you can then and the abyssal dead space running is not such a hard activity to do. So you just continue doing this while you do your abyssal dead space running. That's at least what I would do if I started out right now. I would just do this at the same time. I would do abyssal dead space running in my Corax. And I will have a good way to getting some nice isks. So you can see there, ninety-nine percent, very a decent accuracy right there. I just continue doing this. It's very, very simple. You just look for, identify these clusters of cells. There we go. You have to have over fifty, fifty percent to get a, a correct one. And you can see here now we're earning thirty k because we got our accuracy up a little bit. So the more accuracy you get, the more isk you'll get. So if you want to get you can get some really nice isk from this. You can eventually get about one or two million every five minutes if you're really good at it. That's at least what I get on my main account. And then do that combined with the Abyssal Desperate is running. You'll have a nice little income right there. So this is how I would recommend you get ISK in the beginning. Then after that, honestly, it's really all up to you. What I'd recommend you do is look in the agency and join a corp. You don't have to do this. This is just a recommendation. You could look at different things. Like you could look, for example, at security agents if you want to do some missions for some corp. You could maybe go and uh, you know look in encounters, look for look for these uh, and the combat anomalies if you want do these these can also give you quite good loot if you're lucky uh, you can go to resource harvesting if you want to try mining something so you could buy like adventure i don't think mining is such a good activity because you don't earn so much from it but that's also a possibility okay so let's talk about corporations or corps as we say uh, corporations or corps are kind of like guilds in your typical mmorpg so sort of like a group of players, like a cool kids club, so to say. Uh, there's often they can actually go up to uh, like thousands of players in a single corpse. It's actually pretty cool. What is the benefit then of joining a corp? Like why should you join a corp? Well, I mean, you don't really have to. It's not, no, it's not at all mandatory, but there are quite a few benefits of joining a corp. Uh, for example, especially for new players, there are a lot of these new player friendly corps. They can often, they're like very focused on helping new players then these kind of corps are very, very good for new players because you can just ask questions all the time and people are very willingly there to go and help you out. Like kind of like a rookie chat, but there's people all around you. Like often these corps, they'll have like a voice communications, like mumble, team speak, and all these people are really happy to help you. And there's also the benefit of like, you know, I said that there's different areas of space, like low sec, no sec, where I'm whole space where the Concord police won't uh, kill other people if other people tried to kill you. Well, it can obviously be dangerous then, but if you're in a corp with a bunch of people, then they'll probably, you know, help you out. Or less likely that you'll just get annihilated because you've got like buddies around you who could help you out. Uh, there's also a high sec corps, and I wouldn't really recommend joining a high sec corp. There's always the benefit of like a community, as I said, like there are new player friendly high sec corps who are a bit like could help you out in the beginning. But honestly, I wouldn't join it. There's like a little bit of a downside of being in a corp is that you've got a little bit of a tax. Taxes are also like uh, the default corp you're in is like got 11% tax. So you could make your own corp with 0% tax. Uh, so if you join someone else's corp, probably they're going to put something like maybe like 5 or 10%. But there, that is also you could think of like the price for what you get from the corp. But honestly, it is often worth it if you go into these dangerous areas of space like low second, low second, one more space because there's so many lucrative tasks you can do there. Or lucrative activities you can do in these regions of space that make it actually quite worth it another downside with being in a corp there's not all corps count like this but there's something called war declarations war declarations basically mean that another corp has declared war on your corp and that means that they can attack you even in high sec so the concord police won't stay a step in there and that's just something to keep into consideration so especially like in very crowded areas then often there'll be these people who are like kind of hunt to war targets and a way to check if a corp has got is able to be declared war on like if you go into a player 
and you click uh, like if you go into my character for example and you click on then the corporation and then you click on attributes you can see here not war eligible it means that no what it's not possible to declare war in my corp so my corp is then brave my real corp like my real characters corp is brave empire and nobody is able to declare war on it and there's a reason for this because to be able to declare war and corp they have to own a structure like a citadel of some sort or like an engineering complex there's all that's how someone can declare war on you but if they don't have one then they can't declare war on you and that's exactly the case with brave empire my corp they don't have any structures so they can't be war declared and then in general there's a lot of other benefits to being in a corp like you have just had in general have a good group of players or hopefully it's a good group of players that you can do stuff with like do pvp activities have people to talk to and just have fun with so that's just another general benefit of them especially if you're like the social kind of person so how do you join a corp well there are many ways to join a corp for example you can go in the corporation tag here you can also find if you go in social corporation you can go here so like social corporation and then you can go on recruitment and then you can search for tags that you like like for example you can go for looking for exploration pve stuff or you can go for like, like pvp stuff trade etc etc and then it filters out kind of corpse you're looking for you can look at these kind of different operations of space languages you can even go through the like time of the date you can uh, they're playing but honestly i don't really use this so much because i find that often corps here are not uh, particularly great or inactive corps but uh, there are other ways also to do it and you could also go in chat channels and then go into corporate and then english recruitment right here that you join here and then you can just type here like oh i want to join this kind of corp like if you're a guy who wants to do stuff in nullsec then you can type oh a new player wants to do stuff in nullsec like maybe they'll some people will recommend you to join these newbie friendly corps etc etc then there are also other ways to join corps like outside of the game for example on reddit there's something called r slash eve jobs you can type here like make a post saying oh this kind of player wants to join this or you can go on and click on some people's corporation adverts and just say oh i want to join here another way is on the eve online forums you could uh, go to the corporation alliances tab here at recruitment center you can find a bunch of corp corporations here and then another way actually that is like not really like an official way is just to go out there and fight people in like dangerous places of space like low sec null sec and maybe if they're like you know if you end the fight in a good way then they'll be like friendly like oh good fight good fight and then you can maybe like you know uh, become friends with them if they're especially like in low sec i've noticed this happens a lot they're like people are quite friendly like they're just kind of like fights for fun people have that and then they'll often and you can maybe talk to them a bit and you can become friends maybe even that could even lead to a corporation invite right there so say you found a corp you want to join for example through the english recruitment through the recruitment tool in game or on the website and you can usually how it works this is most cases not all the time it's like this but most cases to join a corp uh, you would then go on like the show info here you can find in the peoples and places by just typing in the name of the corp here and then you, it would come up corporations here you can just show info on it as well and then usually in the description of the corp it will say how to apply like for example he says here on my corp brave empire if you're interested in joining please stop by brave empire public you just then click on this link right here and it'll then join invite you to a like a kind of chat channel where new or potential recruits talk there and tell them talk about themselves or they get there like a bit of a guide how to join often it involves signing up in some websites as well because they like to keep a database of all their members as well uh, a reason personally speaking i would recommend you join my corp brave empire is because it's kind of like got two good benefits so first of all it's a newbie corp so there's a lot of fun people there who will help you really to get started and then second of all is that it's not war declarable but they are allied to a big nullsec group like a big uh, nullsec alliance the brave collective so this means that you're going to be in a newbie corp that has access to nullsec you can go to nullsec because everyone there has marked you as like a friendly so the this in the region of space the brave empire lives in is pretty safe to be there or relatively speaking you've got a lot of friends around you can help you out but then you can also go to high sec and relax because you don't have to worry about people declaring war on you so i think it's a pretty chill corp you don't really lose much to be in it i mean it's only the tax of actually brave empire is even lower than the npc corp so it's it would actually be just better to join the brave empire if you were to be in an npc corp so that's just my opinion i'm obviously biased but i definitely think you should check brave empire out if you're a new player and interested in joining 
mean, I'm there. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for corporations, and that's it actually for my tutorial series in general. So we've gone over how to join corps, how to earn a bit of more consistent income doing project discovery and abyssal dead space. So we're doing a bit more of like a low risk, moderate reward activity when you want to relax. And this marks the end of my tutorial series. It is a kind of maybe a little bit of a sad time, but also uh, I'm actually glad that I finally got this done because it took it has taken me a long time to get this done. A lot of retakes. It's been pretty. Like, I want to get things out there pretty clearly. But it's finally done. Hope you enjoyed, and I really hope I helped you guys and new players in one way or another. Uh, if it did, if you did like this video or just like this series in general, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.